So I'm a little embarrassed to admit this. I have had this skillet hanging in my kitchen for probably close to a decade, and I have never done anything with it. But here's what we're dealing with on the inside. This is ugly, I'm not as concerned about this, but if you, I don't know if you can see this on video, but there is like a layer of coating that chipped off, like I can grab that with my fingernail, but I haven't really known what to do with it, AKA I've just been ignoring it basically. But today is the day of reckoning. I'm gonna see if we can figure out how to sand this pan down, re-season it, and start using it again because I kind of feel sad that it's been sitting there neglected for as long as it has. I don't know the manufacturer of this pan. I mean, I got it at a garage sale. It doesn't have a mark of a maker on it. Full disclosure, I've never actually re-seasoned a pan to this extent. I've done some little bits of re-seasoning here or there with less drastic cases, but this one's gonna require some power tools. So I'm going out to see if Christian can give me a hand. So he's feeding cows, I gotta help him finish that, and then we're gonna go up and work on the pan. I'm gonna go get the gate for him. Now can you help me? I balls. It's a disaster. Kind of gross. It's, I know. So the internet, because that's the best place to look for advice, obviously, says like a drill with a sanding wheel. So you want to take it all the way down to the metal? Yeah, it'll be shiny because like there's this coating right here. That's like a it's like a ridge of coating that peeled off. So we need to get all that down. We have the technology. Are you gonna use a drill or what? We'll start with the drill. What is this, a wire brush? Yep. So we're not we're not sanding it, we're just brushing well, it. Well, we're gonna try, see what it does. This, you have to use this. I don't like it. You don't like that one? Nope. It's not working? Let's try this, a little different guy. <laughs> Part of the problem is this thing is all covered in grease. You need to clean this thing. Yeah, it has like, it's grease from hanging above the stove for 20 years. Don't use brake cleaner on it, no. This is like a scotch Brite pad. And, and this is a sandy what, disc. 80 grit? I don't know. You probably should be wearing like a mask. Probably. Whoa, look at that. Wait, bring it back. There's like all of the gross coating and it's taking off that rim right we haven't worked on that part yet but it's taking it off pretty good so definitely the sandpaper stuff was the trick should have worn an apron should have worn a different color hoodie mm -hmm. making progress looks good i like it Okay, headed in for step number two. All right, so next up, I'm gonna wash this with some soap and water just to get all the sanding dust and any of the remaining junk off of it. And then I'm gonna dry it really, really well, and we're gonna stick it in the oven. So I'm preheating the oven to 400 degrees. So keep in mind right now, it's basically naked, and this is when the metal will want to rust. So after you wash it, you don't wanna let it drip dry. I would dry it with a a towel and we want to get this next step going right away. Okay, so now it's time to oil and this can get really confusing because I have found approximately 29 million recommendations for what sort of oil to use to re-season a skillet. I've seen a lot of sources recommend the coconut oil as a good option, so that's what I have, that's what I'm using. And this is gonna be a very light layer I do not want it globby or runny. If you get too much oil on in this part of the process, you'll get those stripey lines like you saw before we stripped it down, that was my bad. And now remember, if you have a skillet that just needs a touch up on its seasoning, you don't have to do the whole grinding thing every time. But if you find great Aunt Martha's skillet out in the barn hanging on a nail, you might wanna do the sanding thing that you just saw us do. All right, so now I'm gonna take Mr. Skillet. My oven is nice and hot. I'm going to stick it in my oven. Whew. On that top rack. 
upside down. I'm going to stick this underneath the skillet to catch any drips. Although I really doubt there will be drips because there's not a lot of oil on it. Bye bye, Mr. Skillet. Okay, timer set, here we go. Now unfortunately this will probably get a little smoky, so I'm gonna open a window and feel free to turn on your exhaust fan if you have one. Okay, the timer went off. Let's see how we're looking for this first round. So it doesn't look a whole lot different than when we put it in. I'm gonna give it a minute to cool and then I'm going to grab a little bit more coconut oil, a fresh paper towel, and coat it all over again. And I'm gonna stick it back in the oven for another 30 minutes. Okay, it's a few hours later. I had let my pan finish its fourth round and let it cool down in the oven. And I took it out and honestly, I'm not really happy with it. It is not super dark. It's a little bit sticky, even though I tried to keep my layer of oil so thin. And I feel like it just doesn't have a coating on it like it needs to. And as I get deeper into cast iron, forums and recommendations, flaxseed oil is the thing that keeps coming up over and over again. I don't have any flaxseed oil though. So I'm gonna try lard. This is honest to goodness lard I rendered from actual pig fat. The good news is, is like, I don't feel like I've hurt the skillet. Um, it's salvageable, it's cast iron, like it's hard to kill, right? You can see it's still pulling out a lot of brown out of the coconut oil layer, which I just am not loving that. So I'm gonna go ahead and add another coat of lard on this and the trick is is that we want this fat and this layer to technically bond with the metal like it becomes an actual new layer it's not just oil sitting on top that's what makes a cast iron skillet non-stick and now i'm going to try turning the oven on to 500 degrees and letting the pan preheat with the oven and then I'm gonna try baking it for an hour and we'll see what happens. So maybe it would have been a little smoother if I would have figured this out before I started trying to film this video. But honestly, maybe this is helpful because you're probably gonna run into some of the same issues if you're trying to follow different tutorials and different instructions because they all contradict each other. So hopefully in a roundabout way, this will end up being helpful. I hope. All right, we just completed a 500 degree cook on the pan for one hour and then I turned off the oven and let it cool down. And I cannot believe the difference. And the inside is smooth and not one bit sticky. I do think this little bit of um, spotting is from me probably putting too much lard on it, but it's not sticky and it's not rough. It's very smooth. So I'm just gonna leave that there. I'm gonna do one more thin layer of lard, give it another hour at 500 degrees, shut it off and then let it sit overnight and cool because it's 8.30 right now in the evening. So I'm about ready to be done with this project for the day. If it looks like I just got up, that's because I did. And I checked the skillet after it had all night to cool down in the stove and I am way happier with the result. The first thing I noticed is that it's blacker, maybe not as black as it was before we sanded it, but it's way blacker than our coconut oil layers yesterday. And it is not sticky at all. And check this out, when I wipe it with a towel, it's clean and that is exactly what you want the only thing i think i kind of messed up is that i must have done too much oil even though it felt like i was rubbing it all off because it has those speckles and spots but i'm not super worried about it. they're not raised they're not sticky um, and i know as i continue to use the pan and fry things with lots of fat they'll kind of clear up so all in all lessons learned coconut oil did not seem to be a good option Cooking at 400 degrees for 30 minutes was not long enough. So I think the higher temps and uh, oil like lard or flaxseed oil are gonna be your best bets, but just kind of part of the process. Trial and error, lots of mistakes. That's just how I roll. But no matter what type of seasoning you have on your pan, the very best way to make the seasoning even better is just to use it. So tonight for supper, I think that's a perfectly good reason to cook up some home-raised, grass-fed steaks. 